Here we are again at our secret location, an abandoned warehouse somewhere in the United States. Good evening, I'm Mitch Pileggi. For the past few months, our masked magician has been in hiding. His identity remains a secret, and he wants to keep it that way. While undercover, he's been designing some of the most amazing illusions ever known. And tonight, he's going to show you how they're pulled off. We'll reveal the secrets that no magician wants you to see including the most dangerous trick ever performed, catching a speeding bullet in your teeth, and the incredible secrets behind making a 110,000-pound army tank disappear. If you think it's done with smoke and mirrors, you're wrong. As always, if you don't want to know how these amazing tricks are done, better change the channel right now. As always, first we'll start by showing you how the trick is performed. Then we'll reveal the secrets of how it's actually done. In order to make sure that our magician's identity remains a secret, you will not see his face or even hear him speak. Tonight, he will be known only as the Masked Magician. We begin with one of the most dangerous illusions ever attempted, the Bed of Spikes. This is a world-class magician performing these perilous tricks. Please do not attempt any of tonight's illusions at home. Check out the spikes. They are 18 inches long and made of steel. The top platform weighs more than 500 pounds, and when it comes crashing down, it is capable of driving the sharpened spikes straight through a slab of solid cement. Imagine what that would do to our magician if this weren't just a trick. He gives the cue and out come his lovely assistants. This illusion dates all the way back to the 19th century. It was originally called the Death of Korra. These are not the masked magician's regular assistants, so we can show you their faces without fear of revealing his true identity. He lies down on the bed of spikes. I don't think he's gonna get much sleep. His assistants tie him down. They use thick leather straps to make sure his hands and feet are tightly secured. He struggles to break free, but can't. Now a black curtain is drawn. The curtain is supposed to spare the audience the gruesome sight of our magician being impaled by the deadly spikes. Notice that you can see all the way underneath the bed of spikes. This is to prove that the magician didn't just sneak out the back or else you'd see his feet. Everything is set. One of the assistants pulls on a rope and the spikes come plunging down. Sounds like they've found their mark. But the show just started, so you know we wouldn't let that happen. How did the magician disappear just a split second before getting shish kebobbed by the spikes? Here are the secrets. In order for the illusion to work, the audience must believe that the spikes are real. I can tell you for a fact that they are. And if you think the spikes simply retract into the top platform, you're wrong. That's not how the trick is done. Once his assistants have strapped him down and the curtain is drawn, the magician must begin his escape. He only has a small area in which to hide to avoid being skewered by the spikes. But first things first. The buckles and straps are real, so it looks like he's tied down, but he's not. It's really just Velcro. That's how he breaks free. Now the magician must quickly roll off the platform and onto the ledge in order to avoid being impaled. The assistant pulls on the rope and the spikes come crashing down. 
just inches away from him. He hurries back into position. The curtain is parted. And there he is, without a scratch on him. Now the masked magician will perform an illusion known as the stretch. He examines the huge cabinet that has supposedly been designed to stretch a human body. What will they think of next? An assistant comes out to lend a hand with this bizarre illusion. The magician unlocks the front doors. Then he opens the back panel so you can see all the way through the cabinet. This is to show you that there are no secret compartments or hiding places inside. The doors are closed and the magician inspects the stretching device. Now a stool is brought out. Here comes the assistant that's about to be stretched. She's in a pretty good mood for someone who's going to be pulled from limb to limb. She is now locked inside the contraption. Brave girl. Once the doors are closed, her hands and feet are put into position. The magician tickles them to convince you that they are real. Now he tugs on a rope, and the stretch begins. It appears as if her arms and legs are being pulled right out of their sockets. She must have a high threshold of pain. The magician slides her head to the top of the cabinet. Looks like she's gonna need a good chiropractor. Her head is forced to the bottom. Then it's brought back up. Now for a little Linda Blair exorcist action. A perfect 360. It doesn't seem humanly possible. Her hands and feet are put back into their original position. Then her restraints are removed. The doors are opened, and there she is, in perfect shape. Now for the secrets. The magician spends a great deal of time trying to convince you that the cabinet is empty, but it isn't. When the trick begins, two assistants are already hidden inside. Before the front doors are open, the assistants climb out the back and stand on tiny ledges, so you won't be able to see their feet underneath the cabinet. Then just before the back doors are opened, they climb around to the side. Those decorative tassels and pegs are actually handles to help the assistants maneuver around on the narrow ledge. You can't see them on the side of the cabinet because the front doors are now open and blocking your view. Once the back doors are closed, the assistants hide again behind the cabinet. When the assistant that's about to be stretched gets inside, so do the other assistants. It's their hands and feet that you see during the trick. They wear the same fingernail polish and stockings of the assistant being stretched to make the illusion seem even more convincing. Watch as they put their hands and feet into the holes and prepare for the stretch. While it looks like the magician is pulling apart his assistant, we can see that the other two girls are merely sliding their hands and feet in different directions.
So how does the assistant's head get to the top of the cabinet? It's pretty simple. She's standing on the stool. Again, more tickling. As the assistant moves her head lower, the stool is removed and she drops to her knees in order to put her head on the bottom of the cabinet. Not the most comfortable position in the world. As for her head spinning around, this actually takes even more physical dexterity. You need a very flexible assistant to pull off a trick like this. With their limbs back in place, the other assistants remove their hands and feet and escape out the back of the cabinet. The doors are opened, and the masked magician has done it again. Still to come, the secret behind the most dangerous illusion ever attempted. Catching a speeding bullet in your teeth. Plus, you may have seen magicians make national monuments, hotels, or other large objects vanish. Well, tonight, we're going to make this 110,000-pound army tank disappear. And it's not done with smoke and mirrors. Now the masked magician will perform one of magic's scariest illusions, the daggers of death. He moves into position. Then on his command, the flames explode. Pretty dramatic, huh? Now for the assistants. Even in the face of danger, these girls love to dance. But enough, it's time to get started. In this trick, the masked magician will throw razor sharp daggers at one of his assistants. Let's hope his aim is good. It's not easy finding brave assistants these days. Ah, the daggers. They are real and very sharp. One of the assistants walks up to the magician to wish him luck as he prepares to throw the first dagger. He rears back and lets it fly. Ooh, that was close. He throws again. Even closer. She's not only beautiful, but brave too. Now, two at a time. What marksmanship? Gee, I didn't know he was ambidextrous. Now his assistant hands him a blue balloon. Yes, this is an ordinary blue balloon. Looks like the magician is going for a big finish. With the balloon in her mouth, his assistant can't voice any objections. The target is spinning. Will he find his mark? You bet. Bullseye. Take another look. The dagger pierces the center of the balloon, and the masked magician has scored again. How did he do it? Here are the secrets. First, he never really throws the daggers. That would be far too dangerous. While your eyes are glued to the target, he simply palms the daggers and drops them into a secret pocket inside his jacket. The 
Mercy, Magical Custom Tailoring. So how did the daggers hit the target? Take a look. Our magical stagehand plays a key role. He hides behind the target holding a special device that shoots the daggers out from the back. He pulls back the dagger, waits for his cue, then releases it. It happens so quickly you assume that the dagger has been thrown into the target. Notice the simultaneous action. Now for the balloon. Again, a dagger is released from behind the target. But this one is a little different. See, it has a tiny pin on the end of the handle that pops the balloon. You may have seen this trick performed with hatchets or flaming knives at carnivals or county fairs. But this is how it's always done. Now for a classic illusion, the disappearing scarf. The magician takes a scarf and stuffs it into his fist. A little hocus pocus and presto. It's gone. Where did it go? Let's see that one more time. Here are the secrets. The scarf doesn't really go into the magician's hand. It is inserted into a hollow plastic egg that's concealed in his palm. See how it fits inside? The egg is attached to a rubber band that stretches all the way into the magician's jacket. From this angle, you can see that when he lets go of the egg, it magically disappears inside his coat. Take another look and see if you can catch the move. Did you see it? Watch closely. There it goes. When we freeze the picture, you can actually see part of the egg as it slips into the masked magician's jacket. Pretty tricky, huh? Now for an illusion known as the haunted house. Don't be scared. It's only a trick. Hmm. Smallest haunted house I've ever seen. The magician examines each of its walls. Supposedly, there's a ghost inside. Must be a small one. He opens the doors. Take a good look inside. You don't need x-ray vision to see all the way through this haunted house. What's this? A tiny rocking chair. He places the chair back inside the house and closes the door. A little abracadabra. The doors are open. And somehow a tiny doll has materialized in the chair. places it back inside the house and closes the doors. Again, he moves around the haunted house. When he opens the doors this time, we see that the tiny doll has grown into a larger doll. This is getting spookier by the minute. He puts the doll back inside. 
the doors are closed. A few magical gestures. A big puff of smoke. And suddenly the toy doll has magically transformed into a living doll. How did he do it? Don't worry about calling Scully and Mulder. Here are the secrets. With the lid removed, you can see that there is a small platform for our assistant to sit on. Her arms and legs fit into secret compartments in the walls of the house. The roof provides the extra space she needs to conceal the rest of her body. When the doors are opened, you can see all the way to the back of the house. What you don't realize is that the assistant is already hidden inside. She's the one that helps create all the magic. The assistant reaches her hands through the secret panels in the walls and replaces the empty chair with another chair that has a doll sitting in it. She quickly closes the panels. The magician opens the doors and there's the chair and doll. When the doors are closed, our assistant exchanges the small doll for a larger doll. Not very spooky, is it? The puff of smoke creates a diversion that allows our assistant to open the roof, stand up, and reveal the haunted house's final secret. And that's how it's done. Coming up, the secret behind the most dangerous illusion ever attempted. Catching a speeding bullet in your teeth. And the big secret that magicians don't want you to know. How to make an army tank vanish into thin air. A lot of people think they know who the masked magician really is. I've heard all the theories. Let me tell you, you're not even close. Here's an illusion that's performed with different types of objects. We've decided to do it with a radio. The magician turns on the radio to show you that it's real. Now he picks up a leopard skin cloth. Please, no cards or letters. This is imitation leopard skin. He lifts up the cloth to show you that the radio is still there. Now the tray is taken away. Suddenly, the radio is gone. Impossible. Not really. First of all, the radio is real. It is also stuck to the tray. It appears that the magician is picking up the radio. But from this reverse angle, we can see that the assistant merely turns the tray and tucks it away from view. So how does the cloth retain the shape of the radio? There are actually two thin plastic rods woven inside the fabric. The magician pulls them tight to make it seem as if there is something underneath. It doesn't matter whether it's a radio, a ball, or some other object. This trick is always done the same way. 
Now the masked magician will attempt one of the world's most dangerous illusions, catching a speeding bullet in his teeth. He begins by loading the rifle with gunpowder. A warning, please do not try this very dangerous trick at home. Eleven magicians have died attempting this illusion. I hope tonight doesn't make it an even dozen. Now for the bullet. He drops it into the barrel and packs it down tight. Next, the magician will take a practice shot to show you that the gun is real and that it actually fires the bullet. Again, please do not try this at home. He cocks the rifle and takes aim. Then he fires. Looks like a real bullet hole to me. Time for the moment of truth. Again, the magician loads the gunpowder in preparation for the next shot. Now for the bullet he will attempt to catch in his teeth. He uses a knife to carve an X in the bullet, so you'll be able to identify it after he catches it. See, there's the X. He drops the bullet into the barrel, then packs it down tight. He hands the rifle to his assistant. Let's hope she's a good shot. The other assistants bring out a pane of glass. As soon as the magician sees the glass shatter, he'll have just a fraction of a second to catch the bullet in his teeth. Timing is everything. In this case, it could mean the difference between life and death. She takes aim. He gives the signal. Is the masked magician all right? He looks stunned. But look. There's the bullet. Somehow he's managed to catch it. See? X marks the spot. Let's see that one more time. How did he do it? Here are the secrets. Obviously, the masked magician isn't crazy enough to try to catch a bullet in his teeth. Some magicians actually have their assistants use a real gun and bullet, then deliberately miss when they fire. Unfortunately, once in a while, they don't miss. And that's how 11 magicians wound up dead. But the masked magician is smarter than that. Your first clue that he wasn't using a real gun should have been the musket. When's the last time you saw a gun loaded like that? While it looks like he's filling the barrel with gunpowder, he really isn't. The gun never actually fires anything. Just some Hollywood special effects. Hidden on the other side of the gun is a battery-powered mechanism that creates a small explosion at the end of the barrel when the trigger is pulled. So how did the bullet appear to hit the target on the practice shot? Take a look. Behind the target, there's an electronic charge that's set off the moment the trigger is pulled. That's what creates the bullet hole. It's the same thing with a pane of glass. Another electronic charge is concealed in the frame and wired to a detonator operated by a magical stagehand. Now the masked magician must pretend to be shot. Pretty good acting, but no Oscar. I know what you're thinking. How did the bullet get into his mouth? It's all sleight of hand. At the end of the plunger, there's a tiny magnet that goes down inside the barrel of the gun. There it is. Instead of packing the bullet down tight, it is actually pulling it out. 
See if you can catch the sleight of hand. There, did you see it? When the magnet lifts the bullet out of the barrel, the magician palms it in his hand. Then while you're distracted by the assistance, he quickly slips it into his mouth. The gun is fired. The magician spits out the bullet and X marks the spot. No need to check the obituaries in the morning paper. The masked magician lives on. When we return, we'll take you outside the warehouse to reveal the amazing secrets behind one of magic's biggest illusions. How to make a 110,000 pound army tank vanish right before your very eyes. And it's not done with smoke and mirrors. Now a trick that everyone can try at home, turning water into ice. And you don't even need a freezer. The magician pours the water into the mug. He jiggles it around, a little abracadabra. And the water's gone, nothing but ice. How did he do it? This trick is really easy. When the illusion begins, the ice cube is already in the mug. There's also a sponge in the bottom. See, there it is. It's helpful when the sponge is the same color as the mug. The ice cube sits on top of the sponge. When the magician pours in the water, it is absorbed. He jiggles the mug around to make sure all the water is soaked up. A little magical gesture and out comes the ice cube. It's just that simple. Now the masked magician will perform a trick known as the mismatched girl. He opens the boxes one door at a time to show you that there is no place to hide. Out comes the assistant. She's pretty well put together, but that doesn't mean he won't tamper with perfection. She steps inside the box and he closes the doors. He opens the top panel to show you that she is still inside. The box is spun around so you can see that she hasn't escaped through a back panel. I can tell you for a fact that she hasn't. Now the magician inserts the blades. They are made of solid steel and are designed to separate each of the boxes. It seems as if our assistant is being cut into pieces. Those boxes must be soundproof because I don't hear her screaming. Once the blades are in position, the boxes are taken down one at a time. Now the magician will attempt to reassemble his assistant. But he seems to have forgotten which box goes where. Oh well, he'll give it a try anyway. He opens the bottom box. There are her feet, right where they should be. He opens another box. So far, so good. Now the top box. Uh-oh. What are her thighs doing way up there? And what is her head doing down below? Something's not right. Looks like he's put the boxes back in the wrong order. 
time for another try. The boxes are taken down again. Learning from his mistakes, the magician begins to reassemble the boxes. Now I think he's got it. One by one, he removes the blades. I hope he's got it right this time. It'd be a shame to mess up a body like that. Finally, the doors are opened, and there she is, all in one piece. Wondering how it was done? Don't worry, here are the secrets. First, the assistant is loaded into the box. The magician opens the top door to show you that she is really inside and standing upright. He closes the door and the boxes are spun around. Inside, our assistant drops down and hides in a secret compartment in the bottom of the box. Below her, there's a trap door containing two mannequin feet. I bet you can figure out why. She puts the feet into position as if they were her own. The feet are dressed in stockings identical to those worn by the assistant to make the illusion seem more convincing. While the magician inserts the blades, our assistant gets into position. She uses a black cloth to conceal her body. Just before the bottom blade is pushed in, she squeezes herself into the bottom box. Look how close the blade comes to her shoulder. One by one, the boxes are taken down. The colored stars on the sides of the boxes help the magician correctly assemble them. Each box has a front and a back side. The front is where the assistant hides, and the back is where the mannequin is. See the fake thighs? The boxes are turned so the parts of the mannequin are now in front. When the first door is open, you are actually seeing the mannequin's legs and not the assistant's. The same is true with the torso. It's dressed just like our assistant. And no, those are not real thighs. Meanwhile, the assistant's head pops into the second box so she can give that confused look. But if there's a solid steel blade between the boxes, then how does her head manage to get through? Take a look. There's a secret panel in the bottom blade that opens up. See? Now there's room for her head. The magician shuts the doors. As soon as that happens, the assistant closes the secret panel, then hides back inside the bottom box. While the other assistants are busy taking down and reassembling the boxes, our assistant inside is busy putting the mannequin legs back into the secret compartment. When the first blade is removed, she begins to stand upright so she can finish the trick. The final blade is removed. The magician opens the doors. The assistant steps out and the illusion is complete. Next, the big secret that magicians don't want you to know. How to make a 110,000 pound army tank disappear and it's not done with smoke and mirrors. And now the moment we've all been waiting for 
how to make a 110,000 pound army tank disappear. Other magicians have made large fixed objects vanish, like national landmarks, hotels, and even airplanes. But no matter what the object, they always perform the trick the same way. The tank rolls into position and the engine is shut down. It would take nearly five full minutes to fire the tank back up so it could move again. So you know it couldn't just drive away. While the mass magician inspects the tank, his assistants begin to lock it down with heavy chains. The magician makes sure the chains are secured while the assistants move to the front of the tank where they attach still more chains. The chains are bolted to the ground. The tank is now completely locked down. The magician walks under the 20 foot long cannon and takes one last look at the tank. Everything is set. In order to pull off this amazing illusion, the magician needs a little help from this magical picture frame. There are no camera cuts or special effects involved in the creation of this illusion. I can assure you that this is one continuous shot. We have merely gone from a wide angle to a close up. He reaches through the magical picture frame to prove that this isn't merely a painting or a mirror. It isn't. As he pulls down the shade, you can see that it has a drawing of a tank on it, and not a particularly good one. Let me assure you the tank is bolted down and couldn't be moved in this amount of time. Presto. The tank has vanished. Where did it go? The magician walks over to the area where the tank used to be. How is it possible to make something that weighs 55 tons disappear into thin air, and so quickly? Don't worry, we'll let you in on the secrets. This is one disappearing act that is not done with smoke and mirrors. Here are the secrets. Once it is chained down, the tank never moves. Believe it or not, it stays in the exact same spot. This is the key to the trick. When we pull back, the secret is suddenly revealed. While the tank remains stationary, everything else moves. The magician, the camera, and the picture frame. They are all on top of a specially built platform that sits on wheels, so it can roll from its position in front of the tank to a matching location without the tank. You never feel the movement because everything is traveling together. Sometimes this trick is performed with a live audience present. I can tell you now that they are always in on it. When the shade is pulled, the assistants have only a few seconds to scramble into their new positions. Everything looks the same, the lights, the chains, the assistants, but the tank is now gone. Of course, we know that it's right where it was when the trip began, just 20 feet away. Here you can see the two identical locations. And that's how to make an army tank disappear, or any other large object. Magic's biggest secrets finally revealed. We'll be back in a moment. That's all the secrets we have time for tonight. But magicians beware. There's a lot more where that came from. I'm Mitch Pelleggi. Good night.
Now the masked magician will perform an illusion known as Noah's Ark. This wooden structure is the Ark. I'm not sure how many pairs of animals he can magically conjure up, but you're about to find out. He opens the doors to let you know there are no places for the animals to hide, and no trap doors either. The front door is closed, then the back panel. A few magical gestures, and he reaches inside one of the Ark's portholes. What's this? Looks like a little rabbit. He reaches inside again. Two by two, just like Noah. Now for the middle porthole. He reaches inside. Hmm, a white dove. I'll bet another is close behind. And there it is. Hmm, rabbits and doves. Quite a magical arc. Now he reaches into the third porthole. Unbelievable, a tiny little puppy. Pretty cute, huh? Could there be another puppy inside? Of course. He reaches inside again, this time producing a tiny little chick, as opposed to the three bigger chicks standing near the ark. Now, another little chick. And what's this? A full-grown duck. And now, another duck. How many creatures can possibly fit inside this amazing ark? He opens the door and, wait a minute, one more beautiful creature, and also a kitty. How is this possible? Here are the secrets. First of all, before the trick begins, the animals are loaded into tiny compartments at the base of the ark. Don't worry, they're perfectly comfortable. There's plenty of room for them inside. As for the assistant, she hides inside the ark, waiting for the magician to open the back panel. Then, she climbs out of the back and hides from view. The magician shows you that the ark is empty. He closes the front door first, so the assistant can climb back inside the ark without being seen. Once the front door is closed, the trick begins. The assistant inside the box carefully removes the rabbit from its compartment. The magician reaches inside and the assistant hands him the rabbit through the porthole. He reaches inside again and begins to pull out more animals. It's our assistant inside the ark that's creating all the magic. Pretty cute puppy, don't you think? The assistant pulls the kitty out of its compartment, puts it onto her lap, and gets ready to finish the illusion. The front door is opened, 
and the masked magician has done it again.